Hi guys, so I just finished reading City of Dust, the amazing sequel to Book of Fire which I recently reviewed for the author Michelle Kenny on my channel recently. Um, this amazing dystopian story which is based on a girl called Talia, her twin brother Eli, um, in a world that's known uh, for insiders and outsiders. Um, the insiders are this highly advanced like, technological, technolog can't speak, technological, um, like, world, basically, that's been built up to buy a lot of coding and machinery and, um, lots of, like, technical advancements have been made to recreate these Roman creatures, and that's mainly the premise of the first book. Um, if you watch my first view of review, you'll probably understand this review a lot better so go and watch that one first it's on my channel i'll try and link it down below for you um but yeah i really really love the second book just as much as i love the first one i'm not sure if i love which one i love the most i haven't decided because i love them both just as much i think at first reading this one it was a little bit slower for me um and i i don't know just didn't hold my attention quite as much so i thought maybe not quite as sure I like I really loved the first one so much but then it must have just got into the good stuff because I just could not stop reading um I read the first one all throughout my holiday in Menorca and then I read the second one through the second half of my holiday in Menorca and I was reading it most of the way through my trip home and I read some yesterday while I was chilling out at home and I read some the day before while I was on the train for like a fun day event for this new charity that I work for which is another situ another thing I will talk about in a different video because I had my first day today um but yeah that will be getting off topic um but yeah so City of Dust City of Dust is based a year after everything after the ending of Book of Fire um and things have moved on quite dramatically. Um, Talia and Max have been joined together, basically. They've been in a relationship. They've got a lot closer. Um, and it's mentioned several times that they've become more intimate with each other. Um, but that Talia, Talia is still feeling the feelings that she felt for August. And throughout her monologue in this book, you get a lot of her conflicted feelings about her relationship and August has ran off basically um and she doesn't know why um and she later finds out that there's a lot more reason behind that of course but she's very upset about it and like everyone else really just does not understand what's going on um then Elia comes back um alongside this other prolet guy called Ranjid. Um, he's a new character and he's equally as mysterious to Talia. He's got big tattoos, like a tattoo of Cerberus. Um, he's quite cold and distant towards Talia. And he's like, why are you so special? Like, what's what's going on with you? Like, I really don't understand it. Um, but he seems to have his head screwed on. Like, he seems to be to know what he's doing at the same time but Talia just doesn't understand him and why he's been like this when you know they've never really met. Um, Max and Talia's relationship obviously goes on and Max feels very conflicted feelings because he's still is hopelessly in love with Talia and Talia is still pining after um, August but in her own way and they're trying to keep things together they got back into like the, rela the relationship and the responsibilities they have in RFL um what I loved about this book as well was that you see a lot more of RFL that was amazing I absolutely loved that um how you see them a lot more of the community a lot more of the mother and um all of the other people in the community um all of the conflict after because um without giving you spoilers uh read the first book first before i say this um octavia was killed at the end of the first book and cassius 
steps up to take her place during Book of Fire, which is a little bit, um, kind of makes sense now that you've read it, but at first you think, well, Octavia's dead, what else is there to continue writing Book 2? But, um, it's really well done, and obviously it's it kind of feels like it's the way it should have been written, because Cassius is equally as much of a strong character as Octavia was, um, and you find out a lot more secrets about him and um, why he's kind of become the way he is and why he is so power hungry later on in the book and I won't ruin that for you um, but there is a lot more to discover about him and his relation to what's going on um, he's not just power hungry, there are other things um, yeah, I love all the character conflicts between all of them, all the relationships. I love Talia as a character. She's so strong. She's so, like, even when things, when she's physically, like, injured or, like, close to death or whatever, or someone she loves is close to death, she's constantly fighting. She's constantly there trying to make sure that she's not failing. There's been a couple of times where she was going to give up and she thought she was going to die or she was things like that. Like I said, I won't spoil it for you again, but she's just such a strong character and I absolutely love that about her. And her and um, August's relationship, the way they really gel together as well. Like, of course, he eventually comes back. Um, and again, without spoiling it for you, they, they do kind of make things up between them. And um, it's really smoothly done. Like, you kind of realise August's... Um, reasons for what he did for why he left um another thing that i absolutely loved about the first book is unus um the centaur is he a centaur no not a centaur he's a cyclops <laughs> like a one-eyed beast um i mentioned in my last review that i absolutely loved unus i adored him and i adored him even more in this book he's so sweet i can't <laughs> i can't even explain how much i love him as a character he's just He's, yeah, he's one of my favourites. He's just so, like, protective and he adores Talia and Elia and he will, like all of the others, he will risk his life for them. Um, on another note as well, which is kind of related, you get the prolets, you get a lot of the younger group this time and it's called City of Dust because they are living in this big, castle tower sort of thing is how I imagined it that's like castle ruins um where it's all dust basically <laughs> and they're living underneath it hiding from the from Cassius and all of the the rulers because they were going to be experimented on and given pills to be changed and given all of these advanced technologies to make them like some of them have wings or some of them have a lot more complicated um, changes to themselves as people, but um, they were obviously would have been under the control of Cassius, so they are not anymore. And um, they've managed to escape, and you see a character called Lake, who has become like the mother character, and she becomes a very very big character later on. I won't give spoilers. Um, along with Atticus, um, who is the, the male leader of the group, he's, they're both quite young, they're like 11 or 12 I think, around that, very young, more like middle grade, um, but you kind of see their relationships as well between them as a group, how they protect all of the younger children in their group, because they are just children who have managed to escape, that's, that they're trying to keep, like, make their new Arafel, they call it new Arafel, um, to make their new lives together and they won't join Arafel when Tala, Talia tries to persuade them because they think they found their own place in the city of dust um yeah so then you see their relationships and you see them grow as characters um but unfortunately Lake is taken away for reasons that will become known later on in the book which are very very important plot points so I won't ruin them for you um and yeah, it kind of leads you into the ending and you start to unfold all of the reasons why um, why Lake was taken away, um, how Atticus is also related to all of them, trying to give 
details without giving too many details. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's just so beautifully written. The writing is amazing. I gave the book a five stars again because I loved it so much. Um, without giving you too many spoilers, I loved the characterization. I loved the world building. Um, I think I said in my last review that it reminded me a lot of The Hunger Games and I can definitely see that again in this book too um, because there's a lot of like people with modification and monsters and obviously being trapped inside the world um, lots of things like that the <laughs> the um, uh, love triangle again of course um, but there are so many things to admire about this book and I've also been chatting to the author a little bit more and she's so lovely and um, she loved my review the first time and I really hope she likes this one but I'm just being honest, I'm not, I might just look like I'm not being critical but I'm just, I genuinely just have no bad words to say about the book, I just loved it so much and it just kept me reading the whole of my holiday and ever since then until the train today, so yeah. Um, I don't really have any criticisms to be honest. Um, there were slow points again as always, but that was just me being on holiday and not always wanting to read. But um, I can't wait for the third book which is coming out at the end of the year called Storm of Ash um, by the author Michelle Kenny. So go and give both of those books a read if you like a good dystopian. I definitely would compare it to Terry Terry Slated series as well. Hunger Games. Um, what else? Divergent. Um, all that sort of thing. Probably also Eve of Man by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher, which is currently sitting on my shelf. It's right in my <laughs> line of view. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching another review, guys, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.